Today is November 9th, 2021, and uh, just a, a brief report on my neuropathy. When they decided to take me off of the former chemo because it wasn't working, they put me on this new chemo that's supposed to be the state-of-the-art chemo and uh, the best there is today. And what I've noticed is that it, it prevented it, or it stopped the neuropathy from the waist up, basically. I can drink cold water. I don't have to just sip. I can eat ice chips. I can eat an ice cream cone. My hands don't get cold. I can reach in the fridge and grab a bottle of something that's cold and it doesn't affect my hands. However, what it has done has affected my feet. And so it's not doesn't bother me so much as I'm walking around during the daytime. It's when I go to bed at night. And maybe because you level off and you're not exercising, the neuropathy goes to your toes. So what I've been doing in the past is mother made me a bean bag and I throw it in the microwave for a couple of minutes, warm it up, chuck it in the bottom of the bed. And then when I get in, I can just uh, put my feet on the bean bag or close if it's too hot for a while. And, uh, and then I can sleep like a baby. Well, this last weekend, we went to Idaho Falls to uh, participate in the blessing of Olivia and Connor's new little baby. And uh, I was telling Michael about it and about the neuropathy and what I would do with a beanbag. And he said, hey, I'll tell you what I do. And this is what some mountain climbers do. And he introduced me and he bought me this on Amazon. And this is a Nalgene, I guess, N-A-L-G-E-N-E, -E, made in the USA, glows in the dark, which is kind of cool. And he said, he told me if you boil water and put it in here, it'll stay warm for six hours. So he ordered it. This was on a Sunday. He ordered it. It showed up Monday. Today's Tuesday. So it came Monday. And last night I filled it up with uh, boiling water. Turned all the lights off. Sure enough, it glows in the dark so you can find it. Put it in my bed about 15 minutes before I went to bed. Then when Grandma and I had our prayers, we said, Amen. I jumped in bed. The bed was warm. And I slept like a baby. I went to bed about 9.30. Woke up at 4 o'clock. This was still warm. It had cooled off quite a bit, but it was still warm. So then I went in the kitchen, got up, went in the kitchen, and had a drink of orange juice. Rather than boil it, I just put hot water in how did I get it out of the out of the uh, faucet and put it in here. And then I got up at 8.30 and it was still warm. Michael Neal, you saved my life once again. Thank you very much. I highly recommend this for everybody. Kind of a special tool. Peyton just told me my voice is starting to sound a little scratchy. And it's because I have this stupid cancer. So I've got my favorite badge here. It says cancer sucks and it does. One of the things it does is it kind of fouls up your voice. So Peyton, why don't we stop for just a minute and I'll go get a drink of water. This is a letter from Paul Hepburn, a recent convert. I am now age 73. As we left our service in Washington, D.C. South Mission, we received this nice note from Brother Paul Heffron, a recent convert to the gospel of Jesus Christ, in which he had the opportunity to get acquainted with and teach him about the importance of family history. Dear Brother and Sister Samson, what an uplifting letter this is. I'm having the time of my life with one divine appointment after another, because as my trust and confidence in the restored gospel grows, so does Heavenly Father see me as trustworthy to represent Jesus in this world to the right people in the right places at the right time of readiness. It is very humbling and indeed an awesome privilege. You know exactly what I'm talking about because of your own family heritage and servant's heart. I often remind the elders that no matter how much rejection we may face, we're the ones who truly have the gold. I'm excited for you as you return to your home. I challenge you to take up the motto of my home, which you visited. I still greet people as I welcome them in by saying, come in, love is spoken here. When you come back this way again and visit me, be assured that I will say to you and Carolyn with great joy and love, Paul. Who is your favorite mission companion and why? Well, that's, a, that's kind of a difficult question to answer because I had 11 companions, and to be honest with you, except for one, they were all pretty terrific guys. My first companion was Colin Tanner, who was my trainer, who had been out one day, I mean, had been out one year to the day ahead of me. And he was terrific. He was a workhorse, though. We had the uh, apartments, close as we call them, and we'd go up four flights. We'd always start at the top in case there was any running to be done, so we could work our way down. But he would run up the top of steps. So he just worked me to death. But he was a great companion. 
Another companion that I'm still in contact with is Elder Cunningham. And I talk to Elder Cunningham every month or two. He was kind of a redneck kind of a guy from Arizona, but he was a super guy. Fun guy to work with. He had no problems. He was a hard worker. Steve McMurray was another great missionary companion. He's been an attorney all his life. And then there was another elder, Paul Peterson, from Brigham City. Paul and Art Peterson were twins, and they were both called to Scotland. But Paul was my companion, and he was just a terrific elder. He spit shine his shoes every single night. And... Uh, he was just a snappy dresser, snappy guy. All of my companions were good except the last one. And uh, I'll tell you who that was in private.